Hi, Scrapbook friends, it's Nicole, and I'm here to show you how to make this very cute little haunted house border for your scrapbook layouts. Uh, this would actually, could actually even work like on a card front if you wanted to make a Halloween card, but I am mostly a scrapbooker more than a card maker, so we're gonna make a border, a 12 inch border for your scrapbook layout. This does require several tools. Um, if you saw my border I did a few weeks ago for the Be Our Guest Castle uh, from the Magic Kingdom at Disney World, I kind of, that's where I started my inspiration for this. Um, but other than also being a castle, I think it looks very, very Halloween-ish. So you do need quite a few tools for this. Um, there are a few things that are kind of optional that we can work around, but a couple that would be pretty, um, pretty hard not to have. So you're going to need several colors of cardstock, goldenrod for the base. You could use a different yellow if you had a different yellow. Um, Starry Night Shimmer is what I used for the blue sky background. Black for the actual haunted house. I used Autumn Hay Shimmer for the moon. Um, if you had some like of a maybe a textured paper, a couple summers ago we had like a, a paper that had almost like some little fibers in it. I can't remember what it was called. Wheat paper, I don't remember. Um, but if you had something with a little bit of texture, that would also work, something that looks like the moon. And then I used some white shimmer for the ghosts. So those are the papers that you're going to need. Then you're going to need the Starry Border Maker cartridge or the border. You're going to need the Fairgrounds punch for the house. You're going to need the ghosts. Uh, for the ghosts, or if you don't have a, the ghost border maker cartridge, this one sold out super fast and is not coming back. I'm going to show you an option where you can use any heart punch. You probably want one that's about, I think this one is an inch and a quarter. I would not go bigger than an inch and a quarter, but even like a one inch or a three quarter inch heart punch, I'll show you how you could substitute this for the ghost border maker cartridge since that one is no longer available. Um, I also threw in the firecracker um, punch just to give a little extra tower in there. Um, of course, you're going to need your adhesives. I did use both repositionable and permanent. You need your border maker system, and then you're going to need from the custom cutting system, you're going to need the biggest circle and the blue blade, and that's to cut the moon. All right, so let's get going. I'll try to clear this clutter off while we're working. Um, we're going to do a lot of the cutting and, um, punching first so that we can put our um, put our tools away and get them off the work surface. So I'm going to start by cutting my uh, base out of the goldenrod cardstock and I want this to be two and three quarter inches wide by 12 inches of course. And while I've got this goldenrod I'm going to cut a little sliver not quite a quarter of an inch. So if you look at your Creative Memories trimmer. Um, the You see that the logo is here and the line closest to the logo is your actual cutting line. The edge of this gray mat is the one quarter inch line. The second line right here is an eighth of an inch line. An eighth of an inch is too small, a quarter inch is too wide. So we are gonna cut just kind of in between those two um, lines. So I'm not on the eighth of an inch line. I'm not all the way to the quarter inch line. I'm trying to get about a three eighths of an inch. If you cut it too wide, it's not going to be a big deal because we're just using this to be the lights in the back of our haunted house. So there's your yellow or your golden rod. Um, the next thing we're going to do is with the starry night shimmer Starry Night Shimmer, that's right. Okay, we're then going to use the Starry Border Maker cartridge. And I love this one because of the little textured edge that it gives. I just think this is very fun. So again, put your cartridge in, open up your paper guide, position your paper, and then we're gonna punch down that whole border. This one makes a ton of confetti. And the confetti are is this really cute little star. So you could probably use this for something if you were to do um, 
Maybe you do shaker cards or something like that. Um, it is hard sometimes to just throw these darling little stars away, but um, you know, if you have a great idea for what to do with these stars, you might want to save them. But for the sake of this video, I'm not going to worry about them. Now I'm going to take my cut Starry Night paper and I'm going to cut this at two and a half inches. So the fattest point is going to be at the two and a half inch line. All right. And then um, I'm not quite done with my straight trimmer. So let's go ahead and punch the, the fairgrounds border punch. So we're going to start at the black line right here, like with all the punches. And actually, I'm going to punch it on top of this paper to catch all the confetti. And then just make sure that you line this up so that you get a nice straight border. The top of the Ferris wheel is actually flat. If you look on here, that's where it connects kind of to the top. And so that's what you're positioning to keep your paper straight. And we're not actually going to use these Ferris wheels. So if you accidentally don't cut it all the way perfectly, it's going to be okay. So now we're going to take all this confetti and get rid of it. And this one, I don't want to cut too, um, too thick. So I'm going to cut it at one and a half inches. And uh, you guys who watch my videos know anytime I possibly can use this side of the trimmer where the bulk of my paper uh, can be positioned on the trimmer, I like to do that. So one and a half inches, we're going to cut that off. And there's our little border with the fairgrounds. And then I think we're done. Nope, we're not quite done. No, we are. We're done with the straight trimmer for now. Unless I, unless I'm, I'm remembering wrong. All right, we're done with the black cardstock. Let's keep punching. Let's take our ghost cartridge and we're going to punch out a bunch of these ghosts. You are not going to use this whole um, strip of ghosts. I mean, I guess you could, but uh, so if you just have a scrap of this uh, white shimmer, you could use that, but I just like to punch out a whole, a whole row of them so that I end up with a clean edge that's left on my uh, paper. And again, tons of confetti. We are done with that. And the last thing we're going to need to cut, oh, no, two last things. We're going to cut our moon using the Autumn Hay Shimmer and the blue blade on the inside. So I'll point out that the blue blade's a little bit tricky because there is such a gap between the little feet and the actual cutting blade. This is the one that I have much, um, oops, I am much more likely to not get both feet in the blade because the, the blade is so far away. If you start cutting and it immediately starts tearing your paper, that's probably a sign that you didn't get both feet in the groove. So make sure you got both feet in the little groove so that your blade can go be at the correct angle from the edge of the uh, template. Okay, or the pattern. So there's our um, moon. I thought I was keeping all the confetti off of here, but it's sticking to me. All right, and actually I need to go back to my black cardstock and just punch one of the firecracker. So this one's optional, but I have the little firecracker punch and I have to admit that I don't haven't used it a whole lot. Um, so I'm always looking for a way that I can make that work. Then the last cut we need to make is with our dark green cardstock. And we're going to use the 12 inch decorative trimmer. So if you've uh, seen me use a decorative trimmer before, it has two tracks. We call this one the wavy and we call this one the swell and we're going to use the swell and I'm going to position my paper so that the edge of the paper ends up at this kind of 
one quarter inch from the widest part of the cut, which it's not really measured. It, the measurements aren't marked very well. I guess that really is one quarter inch, but this one that's just a quarter inch from the fattest part of the cut. If you want to, you might want to center this um, so that it's perfectly symmetrical. The, the trimmer space is actually 12 and a half inches. So if you want it to be perfectly symmetrical, you could center it but I don't care for this one. I'd rather have it be more straight. So I'm gonna line it, position it up against the raised edge at the one quarter mark, and I'm just gonna cut with the blue blade. So you may have the old uh, dark blue trimmer like this with yellow blades. It's exactly the same. Uh, if you need to re have replacement blades for that old yellow trimmer or the blue and yellow trimmer, these light blue blades uh, for the decorative trimmer are exactly the same except the color. So you can get a replacement for those. All right, I think those are all the pieces that I need. And now we're just gonna start the assembly. So the first and easiest part is going to be to adhere this um, starry border onto the yellow cardstock. And there was a question on the um, CM advisors or the CM public Facebook page recently asking, do you prefer um, the repositionable or the regular tape runner? And I got to say, I just feel more secure with the regular tape runner. So this is a little bit longer. I'm going to go ahead and trim that edge off just using my scissors. Did I say you're going to need scissors? You're going to need scissors. Okay. So that's kind of the base of our border. And then we're going to put the moon kind of over here, but I don't want to position it until I've got my until I've got my castle done. So actually, we're going to need another little piece of um, black cardstock just to build our little haunted house on. And I'm going to put this, let's see, I'm going to put a piece of white paper down. I think that'll make it easier for you to see what I'm doing rather than on the gray background. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to basically cut apart all these little houses. We're going to cut out the, cut the castles. Um, we're not going to use all of them, but it's nice to have them if we want them. But don't get rid of the other pieces because we might want those for later on. So I think that I used four, four of the little castles from the fairgrounds. but I'll go ahead and I'll cut all five just in case I need to use one more. And this next part is really up to you. I kind of fiddled around with it, just trying to find out what I liked. Um, and what I found that I wanted to start with was, of course, one castle up at the top. And actually, I'm gonna pull this over here so I can remind myself what I did. So I started with kind of one castle here at the top, and then I took two other castles and I flipped them. So instead of having them both be the same, I put one here and one this way. And then I attach these all to a base just to, just to give me something to build on, making sure that I left my little windows um, exposed, except this window. I'm gonna let this window get covered up because I don't, we don't need every single window right. I could go back and put, oops, I could go back and put a little gold behind that if I wanted to, but I don't think I care quite that much. So here's my... Oh, that's right. I, I hid both of these on the sides. Um, and then I turned it over and took my repositionable and covered, opened, covered up all these little open windows. All right, so all those little open windows now have that repositionable. And then you take your not quite quarter inch or three eighth inch strip and you just cover up these windows, trying not to let any of it poke out the back and then just trim off the excess. And so you just go along the 
edge of the castle. Actually, I think this one I'm going to put a regular piece of adhesive. It doesn't matter if you have extra adhesive that shows through because we're going to stick this all down. But what you want is to is to make the light in these windows. I guess you could actually put the adhesive on the yellow um, instead of on the on the haunted house, but I just found it was plenty easy to put it on the haunted house. All right, and then we're gonna take another castle. And this one, so the castle kind of has a short, a tall, and a medium. And so because in this one I put short, tall, medium at the back, I'm gonna wanna flip that over for the front just to be a little bit less symmetrical. So I'm gonna you know, find that, the direction I want it, flip it over, and then do the same thing, add some lights to this. Little lights in the window, a little welcoming haunted house. I suppose you could use a different color if you wanted to. You could use red or orange or something like that. But just trying to use as few papers as I could get away with. And then for this one, I definitely would use the... Um, the regular adhesive, just because you're now sticking it to this castle that has a bunch of different layers. And I just wanna make sure that it's gonna stick. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna position this, um, this tallest point kind of in between these two points right here, just like that. Eh. Oops, I got a little, I don't want my, little sides of my yellow thing to show. So I'm going to scoot, actually scoot a little bit over more. And you know what? I think I do want to have um, some light behind this window. I didn't do it on that one, but for whatever reason on this one, it's not, um, no, it's, it's not working for me. So let's just take this guy off. All right, now I gotta figure out where I had this. All right. Yeah, this one I might trim down just a hair because it's poking off the edge and I really don't want that. So that's why that size is real tricky because you need it to be wide enough to cover the window, but not so wide that it pokes out on the side. All right, there you go. So you could make this as big as you wanted. If you wanted to, you could add a whole bunch of other, you know, pieces. I did take the the firecracker and my last little bit of um, yellow, and I just did the whole thing. And this is just barely wide enough to still cover all the cutouts in the firecracker. And this was a little tricky because there's not a lot of place to put adhesive on here. I didn't want the, I didn't want it to be too many stars. That looked a little, maybe too Disney. Um, so right here, there's this bottom little cutout. And I, that's kind of what I aligned with just under the little valley right here. So a little bit of tape on here. Line that I, actually it could probably be all right with the little valley showing. A little extra light on there. All right, so then I've just made my castle and I'll just trim this off. Okay. So now we're gonna take our border and we're gonna take our little piece of uh, grass or a little grassy hill and put some adhesive on here and 
It doesn't matter which adhesive you use. I don't know why I like the regular more than the repositionable. People love, love the repositionable and use it for everything, but I think I just like the security of the permanent adhesive. So I lined the edge of the hill up with the edge of the blue. So I still have this yellow on both sides, which I feel like makes it makes it a little bit nicer border. And then I'm gonna take my haunted house and put some, generously put some adhesive on here. This is several layers and it's um, it's varying heights and thicknesses. And just to make it secure, I'm now gonna take my moon and I'm gonna kind of tuck it behind the hill. You could do it on this side if you wanted. I wouldn't do it in the middle. I mean, maybe that that's not middle middle. Um, but I don't, that would be too symmetrical for me. I would like to have it a little bit off to the side. Let's do it on, let's do it right here actually. So I'm gonna stick this down. And because the moon does stick a little bit off the top, when you put your adhesive on, just put it like on the bottom two thirds. And let's see, we'll put it, actually just to, to make you guys not get confused, I'll put it right where I had it before. I'll be the same. Kind of right here on the edge. And then I'll take my little haunted house. I'm going to tuck it behind the top of the hill. Oh, let's see. How much of it do I want to have on the moon? Oops. Okay, right here. I didn't have these two edges stuck together very well. So I've got some tape runner showing through. Oh, well. We will put a ghost right there. No, I can't do it. I got to. I got to make sure that I'm, I don't have any tape showing through because that will annoy me. Sorry, real life scrapbooking here, guys, where I make a mistake and I keep going. Okay, this is why people like the repositionable, I guess. Okay. So there, I don't have any of it poking through, although I did want those to be touching, so. Hmm. All right, and we're gonna tuck it behind this grass just a little bit. Just, you know, just kind of lift it up and tuck it under with some of it um, up against the moon and some of it just against the blue. And then all we're gonna need are our ghosts, and so the way the ghosts are, their little hands are connected. So you could just cut straight and then you just end with this little side hand. But I like to kind of loop around and this little smiley face ghost is my favorite. I just like him the most. So I'm gonna cut around. And so I'm basically cutting the hands off the two guys on either sides of him. Cause I want there to be Just a little, a little hand. And this one I put like in front of the house, like he's, he's your ghost host. He's welcoming you to the little haunted house and he's happy. And then just whatever's left on here, cut out a few more. Um, I know that the rule for design is threes. And so when I first did this, I just did three little ghosts, but what kind of party would it be with only three little ghosts coming to your Halloween party? So I just basically cut off a bunch of them. I tried to vary between the frowny, fa the frowny face ghost, the smiley face ghost, and the little woo ghost. Uh, I don't know how to otherwise say that. Just to have some variety. The smiley face, the, the frowny face ghost is a little sad. He's, he's my least favorite. So I'll do two of those and one more. One more little smiley face guy. And so because of the way I've cut, it's kind of limited me of how many that I can have because I've cut off part of the arm of the guy there next to. Okay. Um, oh, and then I took just this leftover, the leftover pieces from the border punch and I trimmed off the um, Ferris wheel, of course. I suppose you'd have a Ferris wheel in the background. Um, and you could just tuck this kind of behind. Over here on the edge, just to give a little bit more 
like they're coming from the little town up to the haunted house on the hill. Uh, and you could always do another one. That's what I did as I did two, two little pieces. Just otherwise this is, this is just extra. And what I like to do is if I did one where the, you know, it's the high and then the low, then I want to do the other one. So it's the flipped the other way. So we'll just do that right here. Okay. So there's our little town that these little ghosts are coming from. And because I did this guy this way, I would probably do him this way coming over here. Just kind of however you want to do it. Make sure when you put your ghost down that you don't put his little face up on the on the yellow for the stars. It, I just think it doesn't look as good with the yellow as it does with the blue. Just kind of position them so that they're they're on the blue. And there are your little ghosts. Now, if you do not have the ghost punch, I'm sorry because it sold out much faster than I expected. And it is really, really cute. But there is an alternative using a heart punch. It's gonna be a little bit different of a look. Uh, and it can be any heart punch. It does not have to be this heart punch. This is just one that a lot of us from CM have. And basically what you're going to want to do, it's going to be a very different looking ghost, but we're going to take this little heart punch and cut down the middle and almost make like a little raindrop shape. And then take a black pen and draw some little features on it. All right, so there's a ghost. I'll do another one. I'm only going to do three, but you can, you know, go crazy if you want. As many ghosts as you like. And so probably most scrapbookers have um, have a heart punch, or you could just cut a heart shape or cut a teardrop shape and have these little ghosts. And I'm just copying kind of the same. Um, the same little faces that CM used for their little ghost punch ghosts. All right, so there's some little some little ghosts for you. So if you needed to, if you don't have the ghost punch, you could totally, you know, use, I don't, I don't like it again against the moon as well as I like it coming like out of the house. So here's a, some little ghosts. I don't know. Or some ghost stickers, but I think this looks really, this looks pretty cute with just the little handmade ghosts from um, from a heart punch. So those are your choices. You can do the, with the little punched ghost borders or your own little handmade ghost borders. And I hope that this will be a fun and spooky fun addition to your Halloween scrapbooking. Or if you're like me, the only place I come close to a haunted house is at Disney World with, at, with the Haunted Mansion. So here you go, Haunted House Halloween border, just in time for Halloween 2021. I hope that you will have fun making this and it will add some fun to your next Halloween layout. Thanks so much and happy scrapbooking.